Okay, so my very first game from a game review channel on YouTube. Um, it's going to be reviewing games, anything to do with games, films, stuff like that. The very first game I've chosen to do is Star Ocean, The Last Hope on the Xbox 360. There's a PS3 version, but I'm going to go into the difference between them quickly, just at the end. Right, so um, the storyline is World War III happened and it wrecked Earth. Uh, basically, you can't, no one could live on the surface of the Earth. It's all toxic and they've all been forced to live on the ground. So, eventually, the group leaders that caused World War III are like, damn, we've wrecked Earth, what we're going to do? They come together and say, right, let's put all money together and make this space this space station and then we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna make these super super advanced ships and we're gonna go to different planets and find a planet suitable for habitation for Earth. And we're gonna send everyone over there and leave Earth to rot. So so you start the group you start the game as a guy called Edge Maverick and his childhood friend Ray Raimi Samanji. I can't say it's a Japanese name. Raimi Samanji and you you're part of this uh you're in one of the ships, there's four ships all together. You're in one of the ships. And the very first mission, which is when the game starts, it goes wrong. So what happens is something in this flight happens, and then you crash land on this planet called Aos, and then the game starts. And it starts off very slow. Most RPGs do start off slow. So it's not that much of a thing. The battle system, I've always liked battle systems. But basically what you do, you see the enemies on walking around. Then you can run into the back of them and get a preemptive strike. Going in front of them or just to the side of them, and you get a normal battle where no one's got any sort of got sort of you know um, bonuses like extra attack or the back attack. You get to go first or stuff like that. You get nothing like that. Or, or you get the attack where they get you on the back and then you face the wrong way and they get extra attacks on you. So the way the battle goes is. You've got your four characters and you can choose between them. They've got their own AI and you can choose to tell them not to use MP or you can tell them to gang up on the guy that you're targeting. So basically you control this character and you run around the, you run around the screen. You press, your, you press your menu button to go into your menu and you see your items. And you can change weapons, which I always think is a good thing. So say your weapon's got fire elemental on it and you're fighting a guy who absorbs fire. You don't, you can't not, not use that guy. So what you do is you go into your menu and you swap your weapon for something else. One that's got no element, or one that's got eyes, and you can do, do, do double damage. That's pretty good. I like that. You do have a delay between the items you can use. So if you use a, um, a blueberry, which cures your MP, you can't use it for a certain amount of time. You've got this little flashing thing at the bottom of the corner. When it goes, you can use your item again. to so stop you from using item after item. After item. It's a good system. So, new to Star Ocean, if you ever play in Star Ocean, this is prequel to all the other ones. If you ever play Star Ocean before, a new thing to, to, to the game is Blind Side. So basically you stand there and you either hold B or circle depending on which game you're playing and it charges up, just little squat charges up. Now if you time it right you can go round the enemy and back attack him for critical damage. Which brings me to the new si the other new system which is the bonus board. Now if you ever played Star Ocean until the end of time on the PS2, basically when you did certain battles and you towards the end when you attacked him a certain way you unlock some new ability like double fall for some, uh, a certain amount of time or double XP. In this game, you've got the same type of thing, but it's a bonus board instead. So you've got a board of about, I think it's 12, 13 empty tiles, and when you do a critical kill, you get a blue tile, which is for your XP. You do a double kill, so if you kill two people, at the same time, you get one for double fall. If you get ambushed, so you fight two people right next to each other, and you bring them both into the battle, you do one battle and you get another battle. That's for, you get SP, which is basically, you use that for any, you use that for abilities in your ability screen so you've got uh, Blade Blade of Fury and basically what you do you put it on that and you make that stronger and it costs more MP so on so on so you, you, you add your creation now if you know your, your, your Star Ocean like I do you'll laugh your head off when you find out who's in the machine it's Welsh yes Welsh they're different Welsh given but it's Welsh at the end of the day and the question throughout the game is is she AI is she real as you get more and more into the game you'll find out why you start questioning that she's got a She's got the hand, the poker thing, as usual. We don't know what's going on with that. No one ever explains who Welch is, but she does she item curation. Now, we search to certain people to give you quests, and this is the main problem with the game. Backtracking. Now, RPGs, you know you're going to backtrack, but with Star Ocean, you're going to backtrack a lot. Now, here's a problem with the 360 version. One high definition now, we're on the next gen consoles. 
I don't expect to be doing any disc swap for any game. I expect to disc swap to one disc and stay on that disc. From the days of Final Fantasy VII, you never had to go back to disc 1 to go to an area on disc 1 or other than disc 3 or disc 2. You never had to do it. Now, bring the problem. Now, Star Ocean is three discs. When I first heard that, I was like, wow, it's three discs. It's going to be big and great. Halfway through, over half, well, quarter way through the game, you get to disc 2. So you swap disc 2 in, and you're like, right, fine. I'm on disc 2. And you can go back to other locations that are on disc 1, and you're fine. Then you get to disc 3, which is the very last bit. So I was like, right, disc 3, great. Here we go, let's do this. And and then you do the and you're on the very, very last world. Now you get quests at the end of the game. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but for some reasons that you'll find out basically you can't fly your ship anymore. Um you you're limited to your ship. So to do the item creation you've got to go to your ship which is on the last world. Now to to to, to go back and get the quest you've got to go back to one of the other worlds. Now what you got to do, you got to disc swap. So if you go back to the second world, you got to disc swap to disc 2 to go back to the world. So then when you got to go back to disc 3 to create the item, you got to go, you got to disc swap to disc 3 and then you got to make the item and then you got to go back to disc 2 to give him the item and then you got to go back to disc 3 because he wants another item and then you got to go back to disc 2 and the problem is, obviously you're going to hire so many materials and the materials aren't going to be on the third world, they're all going to be on the second world the fourth world, the fifth, everything that's on disc 2, so you've got to keep going from disc 2 to disc 3. Disc 2 to disc 3, so on and so forth, and it's so friggin' annoying, which is why the PS3 version is so good. Blu-ray, one disc, no disc swap bullshit. It looks a lot better, it sounds a lot better, they added a stupid little theme where, with Star Wars ones usually, it wasn't like a modern theme. It was an anime, anime type theme, cartoon type theme, you could change between that, or you could have the Japanese talking actors. I've heard Japanese talking actors, you have to sound a lot better than ours, but you know, you sat through the game thinking what the hell are you talking about. That's the difference between PS3 version. I'd rate the PS3 version a 9, uh, about, not 9, I'd say a 7. I'd rate the 360 version because that annoying this what, a 6. Oh no, Stolchon's a good game. It's long, it'll get you engrossed, get past the first bit which is a bit quiet, but if you're gonna buy it, you've got a 360 and you've got a PS3, I recommend you get the PS3 version because of this what will do your head in. Have you got any uh, any comments about how if you agree with me about the game or you don't agree with me, you want me to do another game review for a different game, just let me know.